let's look at the Adobe Bridge. This is where you're going to start your workflow. All of your files can be found here. Unlike Lightroom, this is just referencing your hard drives. You don't have to upload images into it. So because of that, you can see other files other than just photos. So you can see your PDFs, you can see your pages files, you can see your Word files, you can see movies. And right here, you can see that I have a little bit of everything. You can see folders. I'm just on my desktop right now. This is how it comes up by default. I don't find this to be very useful. So let me show you how I like to set up the bridge for myself as a photographer. Just a few things to know. You've got your menu up top. You've got your file hier hierarchy here. You've got some icons here and we'll go over what those do. And you can click between different folders here. You've got filters and collections. We'll talk more about that in a second. Publish, preview, metadata, and keywords. So what I like to do, I'm going to get rid of the collections. To do that, I come up here and I go over here to where it says collections, and now they're gone. I want to put my metadata over there with my filter. So I just drag this over. Now filters and metadata are here. And just for fun, if I click on a photograph, oh, let's find a photograph. I'm just going to open the desktop. Okay, so here's a photograph. If I click on preview, you get this preview here. Not very big. Okay, so keywords, I'm going to get rid of the keywords also. So just go back up to Windows, go down to keywords, get rid of it. And I'm also going to get rid of publish. And there it is, it's gone. Now I have this preview here, it's getting bigger. I can click and I can change the size of these windows. And I can change the size of this window. But I'm going to pull that back over to there, and I'll pull this over to here. So now I have a great big preview. I can change the size of these content window, the images inside the content, because those are a little bit small. And I do that by coming to the bottom right-hand side of the bridge, and I can make them these large as well. Sometimes I don't really need that giant preview there, so I'll just do something like this. So I change this on the fly all the time to match what I need to accomplish. Okay, so just know that you can change that there. Um, options are you can have it fall into a grid or you can kind of get this funky half in half out kind of thing. I can only leave it there. So now when I click on an image, let's go back to this doggy paw or how about the birds on a wire. The metadata is that invisible information that's held within your file. So this image was shot at f2.4 at 1 32 hundredth of a second. It was actually shot with my iPhone. It tells me that down here. It gives you tons of information that you can reference about your different images. If I click on this one, again, shot with my iPhone, and it tells you the date and everything when it was shot. This was 9 17 16. This was 2 19 18. I made some duotone uh, here, so this was generated from within the bridge, and it tells you that I made that on 8818. And you can see here too, we've got, if I click on this, it'll open up into my web browser. So lots of information here. Up top here, I can click on folders, and these are all the folders that are here. But if I want to access my hard drives, they're down here under the computer, so I got a few hard drives popping in. Sometimes that's the hardest thing for you guys to figure out. So just remember, you got to go to folders, down to computer, and then you can access your external hard drives. Double click on it. You can then, and these are all adjustable as well. So this is everything that's on that hard drive. <clears throat> Close that up, come back up to the desktop. So I can jump back and forth between favorites and folders. So Sometimes I'll have some folders in here that are favorites. So if I want to put this Instagram folder in here, I can just drag this over. And now the Instagram folder is there to access my Instagram images. And then back to desktop. So it's a quick way to get to things that you use all the time. And then you can see computer, Macintosh hard drive, users, Heather Proats, and then to the desktop. And then if I click on the Instagram folder, it adds the Instagram folder and all of that. So it's all, that's your hierarchy so you can figure out where things are. We can step backwards by this button. 
We can reveal recent files with this button, return to Adobe Photoshop with this, get photos from camera with this. There's a video for that that you guys should watch. That's how I recommend downloading files off of your SD or compact flashcards. Refine. I don't even know what refine does. Review mode. Oh. Nice. See, I just learned something new. It's not my normal habit. And I'm going to come down here to the bottom and hit this to get out of it. Nope, that's taking me here. Probably over here to the X to get out of it. There we go. Okay, so that's another way to review work. Um... This is how we can open a file into Adobe Camera Raw, which you guys are going to be doing any second now. And up top, lots of stuff. You can create a new folder. There's a new folder in here. We'll call it Test Folder. And then I can drop images into that. So it's in the Instagram folder. There it is, Test Folder. So I can just do this. Or I can do this. If I want to copy this, because you notice it took those files out of this folder. If I want to copy it, I hold the option key and I drag it back to the Instagram folder. And now it copies over and I'll have it in the Instagram folder and in the test folder. Okay, there it is. It's back. I'm going to throw out the test folder. I'm just going to drag it down to the trash can. Do you want to get rid of it? Yes. Goodbye. Okay, so we didn't need that. So we can move from folder to folder. If we're taking it from the hard drive to an external drive, it will copy the image over to that external drive. You have different ways to view things. Slideshow, as thumbnails, as details. Labels, if I wanted to label something like this is, might be my favorite photograph, I can come over here and give it five stars. Now. This might be a five star as well. I can hit command five on my keyboard. A little trick is if you hit the space bar, the image goes large and you can use the arrow keys to cycle through. This is a favorite. So I'm just going to hit five and it gave it five stars. Hit the space bar again. We're out of here. So there's five stars, five stars, five stars. I'm going to bring this back up. Now, if I go to filter and I want to see what I've five starred in this folder, I can just click on these five stars. And there they are. Those are the three that I just added. I already had three as favorites. If I want to, I can hit command A and I can hit command zero and all those stars will go away. Now I have nothing with stars on it. You can star things one, two, three, four, five, and you can give color coding. So here are two that are approved. If you come up here to labels, you have select second approve review. So this one will do command six. That's select command seven. That's second <laughs> command eight. That's approve command nine. Whoops, not eight. I'm going to hit command nine this time. That's blue. So a lot of times I like to also then go in and refine by color. To get rid of that, you just hit Command-9 again, Command-8 again, Command-7 again, or Command-6 again. You can also just come up here and choose these. But that's a lot harder than just hitting the keyboard command. It also gives me information about what's in this folder. So I have 30 JPEG files. I have four fo Photoshop documents. So it's a great way to separate out your JPEGs from your RAWs if you're processing a bunch of RAWs. I shoot JPEG and RAW a lot of times with my cameras because I like the artistic modes for the JPEG files. It's a processed look. It also can come down and break it down by the date that things were shot. Date modified. Your aspect ratio. So if you want to see everything that's 16 by 9, there's some 16 by 9s. A whole bunch of one by ones. I like to shoot square. And it will also break down by color profile, bit depth, ISO. You guys, there's so much here. So I just want you to take some time and explore that, okay? Tools. We're going to use this quite a bit. We're going to come down here and we're going to do batch renaming. We're going to make a contact sheet. We might play with some 
merge stuff, but that'll be probably in the Digital Photographic Imaging 2 class. And we're going to look at the metadata as well. So metadata is that invisible information that's hidden within your file. So what you can do is you can create a metadata template. And we're going to do that in a second video. Don't want to make this one too long. So workspace, you can reset it back to your standards or you can save a workspace. So to save this workspace, once you get one that you like, you're just going to go new workspace and I'm going to call mine HP and then I'm going to call it test so I can get rid of it later. And you want to save everything, say save. Now when I come back up here to workspace, I can go down to uh, reset standard. Remember that's where we started. And now if I come back here to HP test, it takes us back to that workspace I just created. You guys fill your screen. To do that, just grab this lower corner. You can just change everything. You might as well take advantage of your screen space so you can see things better. Notice it's a lot easier to see these files than it is to look here on the desktop. What else do we have in here? You can turn these on and off just by clicking on them. And then you can always ask for help. So if you have a question, go to this help and type in what you're wondering or looking for. And that'll pop right out for you. So that's a little overview of the bridge. There's more depth here than I covered. So take the time to explore. But those are the basics.